Well, this is Mauna Loa Observatory run by NOAA. And we're on Mauna Loa, which is the most massive mountain in the world. In fact, if you measure it from the ocean floor to the summit, it's taller than Everest is. What we do here and in our other sites around the world is collect this time series of greenhouse gases and solar radiation and other aspects of the atmosphere. A really unique thing about Mauna Loa is that it's so far from any of the continents and that's really good for the air sampling because we're not seeing point sources from cities. Another important factor is it's so tall that on most days we're above the boundary layer. The boundary layer is where you have most of the pollution and water vapor and particulates. So we're not seeing the influences of, say, the island. Well, our climate monitoring division of NOAA has two really big jobs. One is greenhouse gases, but the other is tracking the ozone issue. We have a Dobson instrument three times a day we'll have one of our staff open up a little dome and point the Dobson at the sun. The sun is like a big light bulb and we can measure two different wavelengths of ultraviolet light. One is absorbed by the ozone and one's not. And just by comparing the two, you can tell how much ozone's between you and the sun. And we'll be tracking it until the ozone layer recovers. Well, I will be running a LIDAR. The word comes from laser radar. And it's a laser that I'll be shooting vertically up into the atmosphere. And the main measurement I get from it is the amount of particles that are in the atmosphere. And the main reason we do that is periodically there's a really big volcano that'll go off somewhere in the world. This is a chance to check our understanding of how the atmosphere works. Well, another thing we measure at Mauna Loa Observatory is solar radiation. And we measure that in many different ways. The whole Earth climate system is driven by the sun. So we've got the incoming radiation from the sun. And as it, some of it propagates through the atmosphere, some of it is absorbed, some of it's scattered back. And then the, the radiation that meets the Earth's surface is absorbed, and then that's re-emitted, except now it's in the infrared range of the spectrum. We've got all these, these arrows of energy going every which way, and if you really want to understand how it all works, you have to measure each one of these components. Some are easy, some are very hard, but that's the whole energy balance of the Earth that creates our weather, creates our climate. So this is a excellent place to calibrate these solar instruments. So we have many groups from United Nations and Department of Energy and NASA, all sorts of places that will bring the instruments up here and run them for a week or two, however long they need to calibrate them. And then they will take them to different locations and um, make their measurements. We continue to develop new techniques and this is a great laboratory for building new instruments and testing them. Going back to, say, the ozone problem, when they saw the ozone hole form in the Antarctic, that was completely unexpected. And there was a huge debate on what could be doing this. But there's bound to be other little, other big phenomena out there like that that we just haven't fathomed yet.